Welcome back, my wizarding friends. Oh, after the sad news of poor Lily and James, whatever will become of poor Harry Potter? Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Chapter 1, Part 5 Professor McGonagall pulled out a lace handkerchief and dabbed at her eyes beneath her spectacles. Dumbledore gave a great sniff as he took a golden watch from his pocket and examined it. It was a very odd watch. It had 12 hands, but no numbers. Instead, little planets were moving around the edge. It must have made sense to Dumbledore, though, because he put it back in his pocket and said, Hagrid's late. I suppose it was he who told you I'd be here, by the way? Yes, said Professor McGonagall. And I don't suppose you're going to tell me why you're here of all places. I've come to bring Harry to his aunt and uncle. They're the only family he has left now. You, you don't mean... You can't mean the people who live here, cried Professor McGonagall, jumping to her feet and pointing at number four. Dumbledore, you can't. I've been watching them all day. You couldn't find two people who are less like us. And they've got this son. I saw him kicking his mother all the way up the street, screaming for sweets. Oh, Harry Potter can't live here. It's the best place for him, said Dumbledore firmly. His aunt and uncle will be able to explain everything to him when he's older. I have written a letter. A letter? repeated Professor McGonagall faintly, sitting back down on the wall. Really, Dumbledore? You think you can explain all in a letter? These people will never understand him. He'll be famous, a legend. I wouldn't be surprised if today was known as Harry Potter Day in future. There will be books written about Harry. Every child in our world will know his name. Exactly, said Dumbledore, looking very seriously over the top of his half-moon glasses. It would be enough to turn any boy's head. Famous before he can walk and talk. Famous for something he won't even remember. Can't you see how much better off he'll be, growing up away from all that until he's ready to take it? Professor McGonagall opened her mouth, changed her mind, swallowed, and then said, Yes. Yes, you're right, of course. But how is the boy getting here, Dumbledore? She eyed his cloak suddenly, as though she thought he might be hiding under, underneath it. Hagrid's bringing him. You, you think it's wise to trust Hagrid with something as important as this? I would trust Hagrid with my life, said Dumbledore. I'm not saying his heart isn't in the right place, said Professor McGonagall. You can't pretend he's not careless. He does tend to... What What was that? A low rumbling sound had broken the silence round them. It grew steadily louder as they looked up and down the street for sign of a headlight. It swelled to a roar as they both looked up at the sky. And a huge motorbike fell out of the air and landed on the road in front of them. If the motorbike was huge... It was nothing to the man sitting astride it. He was almost twice as tall as a normal man and at least five times as wide. He looked simply too big to be allowed and so wild. Long tangles of bushy black hair and beard hid most of his face. He had hands the size of dustbin lids and his feet in the leather boots were like baby dolphins. In his vast, muscular arms, he was holding a bundle of blankets. Hagrid, said Dumbledore, sounding relieved. 
at last. And where did you get that motorbike? Borrowed it, Professor Dumbledore, sir. Young Sirius Black lent it me. I've got him, sir. No problems, were there? No, no, sir. House was almost destroyed, but I got him out all, all right before the muggles started swarming around. He fell asleep as we was flying over Bristol. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall bent forward over the bundle of blankets. Inside, just visible, was a baby boy, fast asleep. Under a tuft of jet black hair over his forehead, they could see a curiously shaped cat, like a lightning bolt. Is that, is that where, whispered Professor McGonagall. Yes, said Dumbledore. He'll have that scar forever. Couldn't you do something about it, Dumbledore? Even if I could, I wouldn't. Scars can come in useful. I have one myself above my left knee, which is a perfect map of the London Underground. Well, give him here, Hagrid. We'd better get this over with. Oh no, Harry Potter's been left with the Dursleys. See you later for part six.